Welcome back to Vancouver Carpenter. So yeah, how are we gonna fix this just atrocious um, off angle ceiling corner? Like it is so bad. Uh, for sure it's the worst one I've ever seen. I did some digging and I was trying to like figure out what they did and I can't find any corner beads. Um, I know there's a lot of mud built up over top of this. We've got like, you know, look right here. We've got like a one inch gap that was just like taped over. There's like, you know, a mill of mud behind the tape. So, you know, you can do that. You won't get away with it for very long. Oh, there's about an eighth of mud there. <laughs> like, this is so bad that um, if you couldn't tell already by these blue lines here, like there's nothing else I can do except I snapped a couple lines and I'm gonna cut all the drywall out and start fresh. Some of the other problems that I'm having here is like, it's just crazy uneven the ceiling here. There's huge dips and dives where all the trusses are. So where the truss is, it sucked the board way up and then it dove way down. And that might be from the insulation, like they have plywood up in the um, attic space here. And so that could be from compressing the insulation with plywood. It just made it all dive down. And then the other problem is that for sure it's not five eighths and it's probably not gonna be ceiling board either. So you can get half inch ceiling board, which is, it looks like regular drywall, but it says ceiling board on the back of it. And what it's for is for two foot on center trusses or joists. That way, instead of being, you know, when you get that extra eight inches, it's not sagging down so much. So anyways, that's why we would use five eighths or ceiling board on a ceiling. And it gets especially bad when you add insulation and it pushes down, so yeah. Anyways, I'm gonna start cutting this out and see what I can do about it. So what I'm going to be using is the drywall cutter with a vacuum attachment to keep it a little tidier in here. Seriously guys, this thing is awesome. I love it. I don't actually see any drywall dust. Any dust you see is sawdust. Okay, let's see how this looks. Tools of choice, glazier's bar and a hammer. Why is this so bad? Okay, we got our big giant tape joint. We'll look at that in a bit. But what is this? Like, why is this failing so bad? Oh, there's so much rat poo up there. Um, you know what's awesome? That drywall saw didn't cut the vapor barrier, so I don't have to patch it and I don't have to get rained on with rat poo. Okay, why was this failing so bad? Oh, I knew that's what they did. I knew that's what they did and that's why it failed so bad. All right, I'm gonna bring you guys down here and show you what they did. All right, first off, let's just get a load of this tape. Like, are you serious? Look at that. That's like, their gap was over an inch in a lot of spots. And then it's only got about an eighth of tape slopped or an eighth of mud slopped in there. Like. You can't do that. That's why it was cracking so badly. The old drywaller that I first used to watch always used to say, I can't fill air. No, you can't, because it cracks. Okay, but now let's look at what they tried to do. So they tried to cheat their off angle corner by cutting the back of the board and leaving this attached at the front. So this isn't tape here. This is the actual face paper of the drywall. So they tried to cheat their corner and then they slathered it with mud and it's all just been cracking the whole time, right? As you can see, I mean, it's looked like this the whole time, just cracked. So yeah, that doesn't work. Don't try and cheat your corners by slicing the back of the board and then hanging the sheet with this part directly on the center of where the uh, rafter and joists meet. Like it doesn't work, don't do that.
All right, got that all out and cleaned up. And you know what? Let's say a quick thanks to the original homeowner that did this work for showing us what happens when you literally cut corners. Yeah, didn't work. Okay, as you can see, it's all boarded up and it was quite a headache. And yeah, we got some gaps here. It's actually not quite as bad as it looks in the B-roll. As for what I had to do here, so the reason I put backers along this entire thing instead of just let it be, is not so much to make it really strong, but it was actually to stop it from sagging. So in between every one of these, it sagged so much that I knew that if I, put a corner tape, like one of the no coats or something like that, one of the composite tapes in here, I knew that if it bowed so much at every rafter, it was gonna cause me major problems because it's like, it's really hard to get a nice even straight line when the surface you're going to has huge waves in it. So that's why I ended up doing that. It was a ton of work. As you can see, the amount of screws that are in here, it looks like I own stocks in a drywall screw company or something, like it's crazy. But I know that it's going to hold up really well. So on that note, it's time for me to start getting this taped, getting the off angle on here. And um, I'm just gonna have to montage it a little. I do have an actual tutorial of that. Um, I, I don't know where it is, just search off angle corner or taping 45 degree corners or something. It's in my videos if you need one of those. But anyways, this video is more about just the process of solving this, not uh, the specifics of how to tape that corner. Better get to it, speaking of taping that corner.
Well, you guys, these corners are done. And if I do say so myself, they look pretty darn good. The only thing I'm a little worried about is like, I kind of wish I put even more mud underneath the tape because like while the edge was really well glued down, uh, there was like the teeniest bit under the center of the tape where I could hear it was kind of hollow. So it may not last, you know, 10, 20 years, but I think this place is only going to exist for like five years at the most. So it's more than adequate. Um, I think I would have need to straighten out the corners with actual framing, like gone back to the actual framing and shimmed stuff out. And that would have been even more work. Like instead of the six inches that I went back, I would have had to go back like at least a foot to be able to shim all that stuff out. So that would have been too much work. And one of the other reasons why it wound up with a little bit of air behind it here and there is because I eyeballed the corner. I, like I pushed it all into the mud and I could see it was still snaking. So I kind of fudged it. Like I pushed it a little bit here and there. And when you do that, then your tape, like the composite tape isn't in the dead center of your joint. And that makes it not always adhere 1 million percent. So again, the edges, like the first inch of that tape is nice and stuck, but maybe that like last sort of half inch or so, I can hear a little bit of air behind it. Um, many tapes have been installed a lot worse, so I'm not super worried about it. But overall, wow, what an improvement. I actually have corners I can stand to look at in here. And then these ones in the skylights behind me, those were a nightmare. I wish I could have filmed videos on fixing those for you guys. Um, none of those are perfect anyways. Like you can see that uh, where the corner isn't straight, it's at least smooth. It was just like, that was a nightmare fix and I wasn't going to like try and do it perfectly. I just needed it done. And it looks way better now than it did before. In fact, this whole place looks way better now than it did before. Anyways, that's how I chose to tackle the worst corner I've ever seen. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. And I just want to say thanks for watching Vancouver Carpenter. Till the next one, you guys.